Hello, my name is Grant Kramer, and I am a professor at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today, we will be talking about powdery mildew. Powdery mildew is a fungus that attacks grapevines and other plants. It is one of the most common and easily recognizable plant diseases. In this slide, you can see the difference between downy mildew, which predominates on the East Coast, with powdery mildew, which predominates on the west coast. You can see the white powdery spots on the leaves. Here are some additional symptoms that you might recognize or not recognize, depending on where you've looked. As powdery mildew progresses, it covers the entire leaf or the entire cluster of berries, so much so that at this point in time, the plant is really in very, very bad shape. If you look at the stems or canes, you'll notice that they can form these black spots on them, which are also symptoms of powdery mildew. On the right hand side, a picture that I have a courtesy of Charles Chambra at the Desert Farming Initiative, where he looked at the inner part of the cluster on the ratchets of the berries, and you can see these little bumps. These are powdery mildew infections that you would see at a time well before any appearance on the leaves or on the berries. Each species of powdery mildew is specific for the type of plant it attacks, so that tomato powdery mildew would not affect a grapevine plant. For grapevines, the species is called Ericifae necator. It is specific for grapevines and is found all across the world. Powdery mildew is characterized by white to grayish patches or spots on the grape leaves. As powdery mildew spreads, it can merge across the entire leaf and fruit. However, the appearance of the mildew as white patches is preceded by infection by the fungal spores, which are too small to see visibly. So once you see the white patches, the infection is already well underway. The mass of the fungus is made up of mycelium, which have hostoria that feeds on the epidermal cells of the plant body. This is a close-up photo of the powdery mildew mycelia on a grape leaf. You can see the extensive white mycelial network on the surface of the leaf with the darker leaf veins below. Each strand, or hypha, is a branch of the mycelium. This photo and the next one are courtesy of Dr. Lance Cadle Davidson at the ARS USDA in Geneva, New York, who studies powdery mildew very carefully. In the next photo, if you look more carefully, you can see more developed hyphae with four or five conidia that is asexual spores within their own conidia four, which are emerging from the hyphae in the lower right-hand corner of the photo. According to my former plant pathology professor, George Agrios, who wrote the book on plant pathology, literally, powdery mildew grows well in cool or warm and moist, humid environments, such as the East Coast of the USA but they are the dominant fungal species in the warm, dry climates of the West Coast due to the lack of competition from other fungal species who cannot survive in the warm, dry climates. The spores of powdery mildew can be released or germinate, causing infection when only the relative humidity in the air is fairly high without the need of the presence of a thin film of water on the leaves or on the fruit. Once the infection has begun, the mycelia can continue to grow regardless of the moisture conditions around the leaf or fruit. However, moisture in the canopy can enhance the growth of the fungus, and that's why it is so important to open up your canopy and get direct light and warmth circulating in the inner part of the canopy to reduce or prevent the growth of the fungus. Opening up the canopy also makes it easier for you to get your fungal sprays to the site of action 
and get better control. So let's summarize the impact of powdery mildew on grapes. First of all, powdery mildew infects the epidermal cells of the organ that it's attacking. So in this case, if it's the leaves, it would infect the leaf epidermal cells and inhibit photosynthesis. If it, it attacks the berries, it's going to attack the berry skin or the epidermal cells, that's what epidermal cells are, and inhibit the color and flavor development in those berries. So if you were to harvest grapes with powdery mildew on them, you would have poor quality berries. And in fact, the powdery mildew itself would impart some additional flavor components to your wine. So there's very little tolerance for powdery mildew on your berries. If you have an early infection that's very robust, you could have inhibited berry set and eventually end up with a considerable crop loss. So overall, you would see reduced vine growth, reduced yield, reduced quality, and reduced winter hardiness of your vines. It is not a desirable thing. Let's review for a moment the life cycle of powdery mildew, as I think it will give you some more insights on the process of infection. Let's start at the end of the season where we have the sexual form of the fungus that overwinters in the dormant buds of your vine. It can also be in the bark, uh, in the cracks of the bark of the vine. On average day temperatures of 50 to 60 degrees, your buds will begin to break. Uh, that also happens to be optimum temperatures for the growth of this fungus. So the spores will begin to germinate these uh, sexual spores, the ascospores, and in about seven to 10 days, you would start to see the formation of these white powdery spots on your leaf or even on your fruit. These white spots represent the asexual form of, of the fungus. That is, what you're beginning to see now is the formation and development of the mycelia. And you can see in this picture also the conidia. On these mycelia, you can see these penetrating hostoria that penetrate the cell without penetrating across the plasma membrane. They simply sit outside the membrane and increase the surface area for absorption of nutrients from the epidermal cells. So let's look at the cycle a little further. Both conidia now are being formed and ascospores are continuing to infect the green tissue. So they land on a, on a cell, they begin to grow these hostoria, they go down into the cell and spread the mycelia across the cells. At some point, they continue to recycle and spread these asexual spores, the conidia, are spread by the wind to other leaves, to other vines, to the fruit, as the conditions permit. Again, the cool climate or moderate climate temperatures with moist air, humidity, will contribute to the growth and spread of these conidia. As the temperatures get hotter in the latter part of the summer, this inhibits the growth of the fungus. It doesn't necessarily completely stop it, but it slows it down, as well as remaining in a darker environment will, will promote it. So that leaf pull, uh, opening up of the canopy is very important in reducing the spread of the fungus. So the most dangerous time or the most important time to deal with powdery mildew is in the early spring. This is where most of the growth is going to occur and where your fungal treatments are most important to take place. Nevertheless, those treatments can still be effective later in the season, but it's critical to get at this fungus early on in the early days of growth and in the cool spring. So as this fungus progresses, we see the formation of lots of conidia, and then the new formation of additional sexual form of the Cleistothesia, which then spreads into the newly emerging and growing shoots and embedding itself inside the dormant latent buds in the summer, which will overwinter as dormant buds uh, during the winter. Okay, what things can we do to control powdery mildew? One is that there are differences in varietal susceptibility. So in our experiments at the university, it was very clear that out of the 13 Phytus vinifera varieties that we grew, 
Limburger and Chardonnay were the most susceptible. Native species of grapes or hybrids are much more resistant to powdering mildew because they have an inherent resistance to it that the Vitus vinifera types do not. Another way that we can control for powdery mildew is by opening up our canopy to increase airflow, reduce humidity, and encourage solar exposure and warming of the environment. And this will help to retard the development of powdery mildew. It will also increase our ability to get the spray into the canopy, to, into the interior where the powdery mildew is most likely to grow in, in that cool, shady, environment where transpiration is taking place. In addition to canopy management, we can also use fungal sprays to control our powdering mildew attack. The most common and most effective treatment is wetapyl sulfur, and I've seen this being used all over the world. It's first discovered by the Romans. It's been used for many, many, many years to control this fungus. Not that they necessarily knew that that's what they were controlling, but it's very, very effective, and there has been no known development of resistance to sulfur, unlike other fungicides where resistance has been developed. Another treatment that's been used, dormant oil in the winter. You would not use dormant oil in the spring when there's green growth, as this would damage the vines. And others recommend using neem oil during the growing season or a combination of different treatments at the same time. My personal experience is not to recommend neem oil. Uh, we've used it in the greenhouse for control of insects. So what these oils do is they smother the insects' eggs, or in this case, the fungal spores, allowing them oxygen and preventing them from growing. But I've seen the damage also of neem oil or even light horticultural oils on the leaves. And I've seen the impact of neem oil on the growth of vines. It's reduced their growth and inhibited their photosynthesis as we've measured it in the greenhouse. So I would not recommend neem oil. Personally, all we've used is wettable sulfur at our vineyard, and it's been very effective as long as you get sprays out there in early part of the spring. The wettable sulfur that I like to use is made by Bonide. You can get it on Amazon. It works very effectively. There are other wettable sulfurs out there. So this is just one example. You can use that wettable sulfur in a tractor or in a backpack sprayer. Basically the recipe is to use one to three tablespoons of wettable sulfur per gallon. And I generally use one tablespoon because in our dry climate, we don't have too severe a problem. But if your powdery mildew has gotten out of hand, then certainly raise it up to three tablespoons per gallon. You want to start the applications in early spring when the shoots are just beginning to grow about two inches high. These are optimum temperatures for when powdery mildew will grow as the temperatures will be between 50 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And generally in the spring, things are moister and cooler. So this is a time when the fungus will really take off. After that, as a general rule, and these, this rule I learned from the San Giacomo family in Sonoma, who are very big and important growers in the Sonoma Valley region, is to repeat applications every 10 to 14 days, except during flowering. This will ensure that you are getting treatment. There is some evidence, although it's controversial, as to whether the sulfur on the berries will interfere with your fermentations. So most people stop spraying sulfur at the end of the season, sometime around 30 days before harvest. At that time, the temperatures are usually quite hot and the fungus is not of much danger during that time. However, if you have a really bad infection, then it still may be worthwhile to uh, apply sulfur. And I'll give you an example of that in which uh, we had a volunteer program for about two years at the University Vineyard. Each volunteer got to take over their own section of grapes, and the volunteers had freedom to do whatever they wanted. And this one volunteer had a block of Chardonnay, and the infection had gotten way out of hand for powdery mildew. And he asked if he could spray sulfur in the vineyard on, on the grapes. I thought it was pretty much a lost cause at this point, and it was in the middle of August when temperatures are very high. 
Now, generally it's recommended that you don't spray sulfur in hot temperatures as it is supposed to damage the grapevines. However, since the volunteer had freedom to do whatever he wanted, I said, sure, go ahead, try it. Let's see what happens. So he did, he got a heavy spray of about three tablespoons per gallon, applied it to the Chardonnay grapes and leaves all over the vines, doused them very heavily in the middle of the day. And we saw no damage to the vines. And in fact, what we saw was a complete suppression of the powdery mildew, virtually eliminating it and allowing his vines to recover. Now, I can't say that those grapes tasted better than grapes that didn't have a powdery mildew infection, but he was able to salvage his grapes from a very severe infection. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you liked it, please like it on YouTube. That's all for now. Bye.